Hi and welcome to another lesson in the physics video series. Today we will be discussing parabolic projectile motion. In this scenario we will have an object launched with an initial velocity that carries it through the air in the arc of a parabola where it reaches the axis of symmetry and the turning point and then continues to fly through the air and descend until it lands at some distance away from where it was launched at a point called the range. Let's discuss each of these steps in detail. When an object is launched with an initial speed at a certain angle, we are interested to resolve this vector into its horizontal and vertical components respectively. The horizontal component of the velocity is called the vox and the vertical component of the velocity is called the voy. At this point, we use the information from the Pythagorean theorem, vox equals vo cosine theta and voy equals vo sine theta, equations six and seven from the reference table. As the object flies through the sky, it really is moving sideways while rising and then falling. When an object is rising, its initial speed, the voy, the voy, decreases, as you see this blue arrow getting smaller, until it gets to the turning point, which is the Y max, the highest point in the sky, and it no longer rises because it has been fighting against gravity. It has been decelerating. The object then free falls. Anything to the right of this dashed line is the free fall zone and the object gains negative velocity and this blue arrow grows until the object lands and hits the ground with an impact speed. The green vector, which is the vox, remains constant the whole sideways journey because there is no sideways gravity. The object does not accelerate in the X direction, but in the rising zone, which is the left side of this axis of symmetry, the object rises to the turning point, which is Y max in a time T up. And then it falls in the free fall zone, which is on the right side of this axis of symmetry. And then the object increases its speed and accelerates as it moves with gravity. The parabolic arc can be broken into two halves. The rising zone, where the object is moving against gravity, decelerating and showing a decrease of the original vertical velocity. And it takes a time t up to rise to the high point. And then after the high point, while it still moves sideways, it is also free falling following this other half of the parabolic trajectory landing in a fall time and the downward velocity is increasing. Let's now take a look at the resultant velocity at any point in the path of the trajectory. So we start with a velocity on an angle and as the object flies through the sky it is very much like a javelin where the green and the blue are added together, Pythagorized to form this resultant velocity. The black line here is going to be very similar to the path of a javelin through the sky. I'm gonna show you a video clip of this right now. Here is a video from YouTube of professional athlete throwing a javelin through the sky. You can see the angle of the launch and the javelin flies through the sky and changes its position and when it lands it lands at the same level at which it was thrown and it hits at the same angle into the turf from which it was launched let's take a look at the replay of the javelin flying through the air so this javelin changes its position and at any time it has a vertical speed and a horizontal speed However, as it flies through the sky, it will tilt and then create an angle to the turf, which is equal to the angle from which it was launched. And so you can see here in this parabolic trajectory, the resultant velocity, which is starting here at the V0, then flies through the air very much like the javelin until it lands and pokes into the turf with an angle below the horizontal. Let's take a look at the equations that go with this kind of a problem. 
there are five main variables which can be determined based on the equations from the reference table. The first is to find something related to the initial velocity and its components. You can either be given in step, say, 1a, the initial velocity and an angle, and then you use formula 6 and 7 to find the vox and the voy, the horizontal and vertical components, or you could be given the vox and the voy and be asked to find the resultant velocity and the angle at which it's launched. That would be the Pythagorean of vox squared plus voy squared, square root, and it would be the arctangent of voy divided by vox, y over x, arctan will give you that angle. The next step is usually to find the time of flight. And here we have equation three, vf equals vo plus at. Knowing that anything that rises has a final speed of zero, and if it goes against gravity, it has a negative acceleration, the time it takes to rise would be time up. Dividing negative voy divided by negative gravity causes the two negatives to cancel and the rise time is the vertical component voy divided by gravity but that is just the rise time since it's a symmetrical parabola the fall time is the same so t up plus t down equals the full time of flight the full time of flight can be abbreviated as two voy since you're doubling this 2 voy over g, which is 2 vo sine theta divided by gravity. The next variable that's often asked for is the range, or the distance from launch to landing. Here we use equation 1, d equals v times t. And since the d is the range and the v is the sideways speed, the component vox, the horizontal component from step one multiplied by the time of flight from step two. Range equals vox times time. There is a secret weapon where you can have a formula that eliminates time. If vox is vo cosine theta, which is formula seven, and you multiply it by the results of step two, time of flight being two vo sine theta divided by g, multiplying vo squared over g, multiplied by two cosine sine, which is a double angle formula, you get r equals vo squared over g sine two theta. Either form is correct and both always work. The next step that's always asked for is the high point or the y max distance. Taking formula five and knowing that anything that rises decelerates to zero speed, making acceleration equal to gravity, we then divide and we get voy squared over 2g equals the y max. So the vertical component of the initial velocity, which is voy squared divided by double gravity, will give you the height to which it rises in its arc. And finally, we're going to look for the impact velocity and the angle at which it hits the turf. This is just like the javelin poking into the ground at a certain angle. We know that the vox is constant. The sideways speed that carries it downrange will always be constant because there is no sideways gravity. However, once the object rises and then falls, we need to know the free fall impact velocity, VFY. That's the blue downward vector. That can be derived from one of two equations, either from formula three or from formula five. Either way, you get the same results. Formula three will give you the impact speed if you know the free fall time, and formula five will give you the impact speed if you knew the height from which it fell. Either way, you get the same result, and when you Pythagorize the green plus the blue, green squared plus blue squared, square root that, you get the red final velocity. And the angle is equal to the VFY, which is pointing down and is negative, divided by the green, which is positive. The arctangent of Y over X gives you a negative angle, just like the javelin that hit the ground and had a negative angle to the ground. In summary, the parabolic projectile problem is fairly straightforward, but there are five basic steps that you need to accomplish. 
you need to find something related to the initial components, Vox and Voy. You need to find the time of flight, the range, which is how far to the side it lands from where it was launched, the Y max, which is the height to the turning point, and of course, the impact velocity and angle when it lands. In the next video, we're going to look at a sample problem in detail with numbers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.